Hi there guys, this is Simon from IV Audio, and in this video I'm going to be talking about multi-threading and contact. Now there's been a bit of a debate about whether it's better to load all of your instruments into a single instance of contact, or whether you're better off loading them into separate instances with one or two instruments per instance. So in this video, if you want a spoiler, I'm going to be showing you that it makes practically no difference one way or the other, assuming that your DAW has properly implemented multi-threading. I'm going to load up a project, I'm going to see how long it takes to load, I'm going to play it back, we're going to see what the CPU usage is like, close FL Studio, and repeat the process with the other project. So I'm going to open up my stopwatch here, let's go ahead and open up the multi-threading separate project here, and we'll see how long that takes to load. All right, so that took 25 seconds to load here, and I'm just going to sit around and wait for all of the samples to have time to load up. Uh, I guess in the meantime, I can talk about what libraries I'm using. I'm using cinematic strings for the strings. I'm using Berlin woodwinds for all of the woodwinds, uh, using Bravura brass for the brass, and Rhapsody orchestral percussion on all of the percussion. Every one of these that's colored is a contact instance with the appropriate instrument loaded into it. Uh, and I have some MIDI out plugins set up so that I can control groups of them together, uh, which just makes programming the MIDI a little bit easier. So we're just going to wait until this last one gets all of its samples loaded, and then we'll play it back and have a look at the CPU usage. In the meantime, let's put that down. Multiple contact. Load time was 25 seconds. All right, so now all of these samples have been fully loaded, and you know what? I'm actually going to add in a little RAM usage field here in my spreadsheet, just in case. Uh, the RAM usage, as reported by FL Studio, is 16.754 uh, gigabytes. I doubt there will be much of a difference between that, but you never know. So uh, here's what the little sequence I have here. It's very repetitive, so we can just let it run for a while. I've set the CPU to slow. I'm using the CPU meter inside of FL Studio because that is far more accurate for audio work than the CPU meter you might see from the task manager. And there's a whole article that I'll link below on why that is. I am using the primary sound driver with a buffer length of 137 milliseconds, and that's just so I can record it more easily. Uh, I've got multi-threaded generator and mixer processing both on. I'll go ahead and turn smart disable off just in case, but that shouldn't really make a difference. And I'm going to confirm inside of all of these. Uh, I'll just show you that I do have allow threaded processing enabled here on all of these contact instances. So let's play it and have a look at the usage. All right, so I let that play for six times, and it looked like to me that it was hovering around 39 to 41%. Uh, so let's go ahead and put that in there, 39 to 41. This is with the multiple contacts. And now let's have a look at what happens if I turn multi-threaded generator processing off. I'm not even going to let that run for six times because I can't stand that noise. I'm not going to change the buffer size because I've tried this once before and putting it all the way up doesn't help at all. So uh, with multi-threading off, we get absolutely abysmal performance. We get like 95% CPU usage and it's just pretty much totally unusable. Uh, right then, so now I'm going to completely close down this instance of FL Studio. I'm going to go to a new instance here. I'm going to close it, reopen it, wait for everything to settle open up the project, and we'll repeat the same process with a single instance of contact. All right, so we're back. Everything's closed and ready. Let's go ahead and open up the single instance of contact project here. And again, I'll time it. Four. 
For FL Studio, I'm using uh, the point where this pattern here appears because that, uh, that tends to be when the project is completely loaded and you can actually interact with the program. So that took 19 seconds. Let's go ahead and put that in. So we got actually a slight boost in the load time, which is something that I have noticed. And if you take that as a percentage, that's pretty significant. And this is not just a fluke. Uh, that's one of the reasons I tend to use a single instance of contact is for the loading times. Anyway, let's uh, have another look here. We've got all exactly the same libraries with exactly the same setup. Uh, I haven't changed any articulations or mic positions or anything, which if there were an easy way to go through quickly and show you, I would. But that would just take too long. So once again, let's wait for all of these samples to load up, and then we'll do our CPU usage test. OK, so now all of the samples have loaded. And you'll notice we're actually getting, again, significantly lower RAM usage here. We're getting uh, 13 gigabytes. That's a whole 3 gigabyte difference, even though it's exactly the same libraries. And I'm guessing that's because Contact uses a little bit of RAM each time you load in a new instance of it. So using a single Contact instance can definitely save you a bit of RAM if you're loading a, a fair number of libraries. So again, I'm going to go ahead and show you the audio settings, show you that they're exactly the same, 137 millisecond buffer length, primary sound driver, smart align disabled, or smart disable, <laughs> smart disable uh, disabled. I'm going to make sure that uh, allow threaded processing is enabled on this instance of contact, and multi-threaded generator processing and multi-threaded mixer processing are both on. So this is exactly the same MIDI information as before. Uh, again, I've got a similar setup here. These are all BRSO Articulate plugins, which uh, have been set to control the groups of contact instruments here. And once again, all of the audio is getting piped directly to the default Stereo 1 master output. So let's play that back and have a look at our CPU usage. All right, so that seemed to be hovering around roughly the same range, maybe a little bit higher. I, I saw it peak up to 43 a couple of times, but it seemed to me to be mostly 41 to 42 there. So, uh, you know, this is not too bad here. We're getting a 1 to 2% difference between using a single instance or multiple instances. Uh, just for kicks, let's try it with the multi-threaded generator processing off and see what that gives. So once again, that seemed to be pretty much identical to me. Uh, once again, I'm not really a DSP programmer, so I can't explain to you why this is the way it is. Um, but I'm assuming this has something to do with uh, multi-threaded allocation of separate plugins to different CPU cores. I know FL Studio has a really great uh, article up about how your audio streams and the routing inside of the mixer can heavily influence how efficient uh, multi-core rendering can be, which is, again, a little more complicated than I want to explain in this video. But the general idea here is that using, in FL Studio at any rate, using a single instance of contact gives you a significantly faster load time, uh, practically no CPU hit, if any at all. And again, this the, the slight discrepancy could be accredited to just the way CPU usage is measured as well. Again, if, if you have a look at the CPU usage in Task Manager and compare that to the CPU usage up here, it's going to be totally different. So calculating actual CPU usage is rather difficult, which could definitely account for the difference here. Uh, and with multi-threading off, we saw basically no change whatsoever, and we saw a lower RAM usage, surprisingly. Uh, significantly lower RAM usage, around 3 gigabytes. So hopefully that will put an end to some of this discussion about single instance versus multiple instance. If I get up the courage, I might do this in Reaper or some other DAWs as well. But in the meantime, uh, I hope that helps out. As always, I hope this has been somewhat useful, somewhat entertaining, and thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye.